Good morning. Welcome to Sunday School. I'm excited to see what God has for us this morning. And this morning I encourage you to turn in your Bibles to Exodus chapter 19. And we're going to look at verse 5. Exodus chapter 19, verse 5. And right there we read, Now therefore, if ye will obey my voice indeed and keep my covenant, then ye shall be a peculiar treasure unto me above all people, for all the earth is mine. And that peculiar treasure is not talking about a weird treasure or something strange. You're not weird. You're not something foreign. But peculiar there means something rare. or And if something is rare, it's valuable. And uh, God values you very highly. And let's have a word of prayer. Lord, we thank you so much for this opportunity we have to study your word. Thank you for um, the opportunity to, to use this technology, to still have our Sunday school lessons. And we just are so thankful for your blessings in the midst of this uh, difficult time. And uh, we're thankful that you still remain in control. And we're thankful that you still speak to our hearts and you're still calling the lost to you. And we're just so precious, so thankful for what you're going to do for us this morning. We'll give you all the praise in Jesus' name. Amen. Can any of you remember the time standing on the sidelines as a game is about ready to be played and you have two captains out in the, on the floor and they start picking players that they want to have on their team? And it, you're thinking to, my, to yourself, man, I hope I'm on their team. I hope I'm on their team. They're really athletic and the people that are on their team are really athletic and it gets down and they keep choosing and keep choosing. You're like, man, I hope they pick me soon. And I don't know, maybe some of you were the ones that were one of the last ones chosen. And how does that make you feel? Probably not very good. As you're on the, maybe there's two left and they're like, who do you want? <laughs> who do I have to have? <laughs> yeah, like that thinks a lot. I don't even want to play now. Uh -huh. And uh, so that has happened. And if you are the last one chosen, what does that mean? You're the last one to bat, or you're the last one to kick, and when they say go to the outfield, it's like, yeah, go stand at the fence, that one way over there in the corner. Don't worry, you won't have to catch a thing, all right? That's just go right there. You, yeah, you're awesome. Yeah. How important do you feel? You don't really feel like you were chosen because they wanted you on their team. You feel like you were chosen because of obligation. Well, this morning, I want to talk to you about the idea of you are chosen by God. And we're going to look at a story in the New Testament. It's found in the book of John, chapter 4. And we read of a story, we're introduced to a, a, a lady that has, I feel like, the scripture does not tell us this exact detail, but I feel like with what happens in the story after this, as we read, that the, her background is someone that has always desired to be chosen because they that person wanted her they wanted her they cared for her but in fact i feel where she's at it is the opposite she's had a hard life where she's felt like she's never been good enough nobody has ever really wanted her nobody really truly cares for her maybe as a young a uh, young adult woman she was uh, or maybe teenage years you never know maybe she her friends were already dating, and she was the only one that didn't have a boyfriend. And maybe she she got in with a guy that her parents or her friends told her, "Hey, you probably shouldn't go there. He's not really uh, doesn't really have a good reputation." But she failed to heed their warnings, and I just want to make him happy. And I finally have somebody that seems to care about me, and he wants me. And maybe it got to the point that she was willing to do whatever it took to make him happy. And then, because of, as the scripture tells us, the pleasures of sin never satisfied, she was left behind because he got what he wanted and didn't really truly care for her. And we see that this happened time and time again. And this, this lady was somebody that was, that was lonely. She was just discouraged and, and had had a very difficult life. Never felt worth anything. Nobody ever really cared for her. All they wanted was what they could get out of her. And she, we find her coming to a well of water. She's thirsty. And we see that she's alone. Now, 
in this time period, it's very customary for the ladies of the town to come together to gather the water for washing clothes and for bathing and whatever they need to do at the home. And But this lady was coming alone, which which signifies that she was somebody that has been shamed in her in her society and in her in her town where she lives and nobody wants to have anything to do with her because of her background she's had a rough life she does not have a good reputation nobody cares for her nobody seems to want to do anything for her and as she's coming alone she had to wait for a certain time when she was going to be alone she didn't want to talk to anybody because she doesn't want any questions to be asked and so she's coming into the well of water and hoping that nobody's going to be there and she sees a stranger sitting on the side of the well and as she approaches she probably had a hood up and she comes to get her pail or to dip the pail in the well and to get water in and she wasn't going to say anything and she noticed as she was coming up that he was a jew now she was a samaritan which the Jews and Samaritans did not get along. And so she wasn't going to start any conversation. And all of a sudden, this man, this stranger says, can I have a drink? And she's startled, taken back that this Jew even talked to her. And she says that. She's like, I'm surprised that you would even speak to me, you being a Jew and me being a Samaritan. <laughs> and he, this stranger replies, well, if you, if you knew who had asked you, can I have a drink? Then you would have been asking me for a drink of living water. That you will never thirst again. And she's like, um, how, what is this living water? Like, what are you talking about? You have no pail to dip into the well. How can you give me any water, period? And what is this living water that I will never thirst again? And she's like, whatever this is, I want it. She's honest. I want it. Obviously, and he says, if you drink this water, you're going to thirst again. But if you drink of what I have, you're never going to thirst again. Now, she was thinking monetary and for her own needs. She's like, well, give me this water that I will never have to thirst again. I, it'll satisfy my needs forever. That, that sounds wonderful. But he was talking about something so much greater, not just a drink of water. And finally, she says, okay, I want this water. And he says, okay, well, go, go get your husband. <laughs> Excuse me? I don't see how this has anything to do with the drink of water. And besides the point of that, I don't even have a husband. I'm not married. And he said, you're exactly right. Because you've actually had five husbands, and the one that you're with now is not your husband. And she's like, what? <laughs> I can imagine that her heart stood still momentarily like, who is this guy that he knows everything about me? If he knew that I had five husbands and the guy I'm staying with now is not my husband, what else does he know? Um, I'm not going to ask him any questions what all he knows because I don't even want to know. And so she says, are you like a prophet? Like I, for you to know this? And then she tries to change the subject because she doesn't want to talk about her past. She does not ever want to talk about her past to anybody. And she, it's obvious to her that he knows something about her past. And so she's like, she tries to change the subject. And she sees that he's a Jew. And she says, our fathers tell us we're supposed to worship here on the mountain. But you, the Jews, tell us that we're supposed to worship in, in Jerusalem. Who's right? That has nothing to do with what they were previously talking about. But Jesus doesn't skirt the issue, and he just says, well, you know, it's, it's deeper than that. Nobody's actually, it doesn't really matter if you worship here on the mountaintop or if you worship in Jerusalem, because God is a spirit. The, the time has come, and it is now, that you are to worship God in here. It's something so much deeper than what you guys are focused on. It's not about the location. It's all about what's in here. I want you to worship God in here. Well, she's like, well, surely you're okay. I wasn't expecting that. So she says, you must, must be a prophet. And, and he tells her this, and then he says, and then she said, well, the, I know the Messiah has come, but I don't know when that is to, to happen. And he said, well, I am he. And I can just... Imagine that everything is beginning to click into place. 
She's read about the Messiah. She's heard about the Messiah. It's studied or, or been taught that one day some body is going to come. Don't know really how, in what form, but some day a Messiah is coming to save us, to save, save the world. And when will that happen? And it, they never dreamed it would happen in their day, but she's read about this and longed for this. And this man, the stranger, has been talking in almost riddles in a way that she doesn't really quite understand, but he's been, and he knows so much about her. But then he says he is the Messiah. It's like everything's clicking into place. And at this, I believe she already believed. Because at that point, she dropped everything. She dropped her water pot and she ran into town to tell the community who she had been in contact with. We see that her original need was a drink of water. She came out there to get some water. We see that her original need was forgotten when her unforgettable sins and her unforgettable past was forgiven. I'm gonna read that one more time. Her original need, what she came for, was forgotten when her unforgettable past was forgiven. When the Messiah came into her life, when the, the God of this universe came into her life and he satisfied her longing. She had never been able to be satisfied because those things that Satan will lie to you and say that they'll bring pleasure. And it says sin brings pleasure for a season, but it doesn't ever satisfy. It doesn't ever satisfy. But Jesus offers exactly what you need. Exactly what you need. That will satisfy your longing. She was longing for something. She had felt so just worthless. Never needed. Nobody really ever had chosen her because of they cared for her. But yet this man had, had for some reason, taken time to spend time with her and to make a difference in her life. And he changed her Life And she went into the community. She told the community all about it. Come, see this man. Hear this man that has told me everything that I have ever done. Come. And some of the guys like, he told you everything you ever did? Uh, I'm not sure I want to talk to this guy. And uh, yeah, come. And she wasn't ashamed. See, her, her, her attitude was completely different. At the very beginning, she came alone. She came alone almost timidly. She didn't want anybody to see her, but now she's going out. Hey, I met a guy that told me all about my past. Isn't it wonderful? Come on. Oh, uh, we know what your past is like. How is that wonderful? Uh, come on, doesn't matter. You know my past. He knows my past and he forgave it. That's the best part. You've got to come. And we see that the people came and they talked to Jesus and the disciples are like, whoa, 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 whoa. These Samaritans, Lord, these are unclean people. Why are you letting them come? But Jesus spent time with them and he spent two days with these people and they heard his lessons and he talked to them and he met their needs and he satisfied their needs. And we see at the end of this chapter or in that verse 42, the people it said that they believed of their own word. They said unto the woman, now we believe not because of thy saying, for we have heard him ourselves and know that this is indeed the Christ the savior of the world. <laughs> they believed, not just because of her story, but her story, her transformation, the change in her life brought them and drew them to a man that they too were changed. And they proclaimed that he was the Christ, the savior of the world. Wow, the savior of the world. Maybe you feel like you've never really amounted to much and nobody really ever cared for you and you were always the last one picked for kickball but we see that jesus told his disciples i have to go to samaria we didn't read that but that was earlier in the chapter they were on their way to galilee and jesus said i have to go through samaria today They're like samaria <laughs> we don't go through samaria we don't get along with those people and but jesus knew of a certain woman that needed him and he chose to go there for her. She meant that much to him. And maybe Jesus is passing by your way this morning. And you feel like 
everything you've done in your life. You just tried to please others and worse, please yourself, and it just doesn't work. And I'll tell you the truth, it doesn't. Nothing that we can ever do will satisfy. But Jesus comes into the scene and he changes our lives. And he chose you. He has a perfect plan in store for you and for me. And maybe Jesus passed by your way this morning. He wants to change you. He wants to make a difference in you as well. We read that first verse in Exodus chapter 19, verse 5, that if we will come to him and seek him and, and obey his covenant and obey his teachings, that he looks at us as a peculiar treasure, something worth so much that's rare, set apart from all the others that he values so highly. And you can be that peculiar treasure to him as well. He already values so much. He gave his entire, his whole life for you. That's how much he values you. Jesus has chosen you. He wants you to follow him. And you've got to accept it. You can be like this woman and, and believe. And the people in this community, that just they, they believe that he was the Christ, the Savior of the world. And he can change your life as well. Let's pray. Lord, we thank you so much for your word. Thank you for these stories that are not just stories. They really happened. and We can apply them to our hearts and to our lives. And, and we see that you value us so, so, so much. And I don't know exactly who all are listening this morning and listening at this time, but I know that there are a lot of those that have experienced so much pain in their life experience some traumatic things and some devastating news and, and just tragic things and felt left behind and, and left in the dust and, and almost feel worthless. But we see that you have chosen us. You have a special plan for us. You love us so much. And you took special time out of your busy schedule to go and meet with this woman by the well. And we see that you have taken time out of your schedule as well to talk to us and speak to us with, from your word. And we ask that you speak to the hearts that are listening right now. And if they don't know what else to do, but let's, I ask you to give them the strength and give them the understanding just to open their heart up, open for you to come in and to, to, to dwell and live. And Lord, we thank you so much for the hope and the peace that you can bring into our lives and the transformation that you bring into our lives. Let's give you all the praise for all the things that you've done and what you're going to do. In 